Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Antics Online. I'm here today with a brand new Civilization 5 game for you guys and I'm super duper excited for you guys to see what mods we have in use. Now, we have City Limits, Info Addict, Unit Starting Scout, and Quick Turns that you guys have all seen in my very first Civilization 5 playthrough. If you haven't, please go check that out. It's a really good playthrough and I'm really enjoying playing it. But we have several new mods that we've installed. Barbarians Evolved is the big one, but I'll get back to that after I go over the Fortress Borders and Workable Mountains. Fortress Borders means that once you put down a fort, that thing gets borders like it's a brand new city, and you can get a ton of strategic and luxury resources that are really cool and, you know, really will really help your gameplay. I'm not sure if the AI really knows how to use this, but we certainly will be. The second is Workable Mountains, which basically means that mountains have yields. It's pretty simple. And, but the... <laughs> Moving on to the big one, Barbarians Evolved is an amazing mod. Basically, it means that Raging Barbarians is on, and the camps that the Raging Barbarians spawn out of turn into cities. Now, those cities can grow and create tons of new Barbarians with high, like, technology and stuff, and I'm super excited for you guys to see, like, a massive Barbarian army. So let me go to Setup Game, and let me show you how that's going to happen. So basically, I'm playing against the Shoshone like I usually do. I like their bonuses, and we're going to be playing on the map type Terra. Terra is a world where all the AI and me start on... Like basically a continent that looks like Asia, Europe, and Africa. It's not the exact, but it basically looks like it. And the North and South America are basically uninhabited. Except with this Barbarians mod, they're going to have Barbarian cities on them, hopefully. If the city states don't take them out. Which I don't think they'll have the power to do, but I'm not really sure because I've never played this mod pack before. I say mod pack, it's really just a mod. Uh, so we're going to like hopefully be able to see a ton of Barbarians. And a huge Barbarian nation, if you can call them a nation. And that's going to be super cool, and I'm hoping you guys will be able to see that. We might even get some uh, barbarian cities on the mainland of Asia, Europe, and Africa, but who knows. So let's go in advanced setup. Uh, you guys can just really look at everything that I've got going, and let's get into it. So it took me a lot of struggle to get this thing to work. First off, I had to get a new mouse. That mouse didn't work for some reason. It's not working now. So I don't know what, it, why it wasn't working, but now it is. I had to get a laptop. Well, not get a laptop. I had to borrow a laptop from my mom. This is my mom's laptop that I'm filming this on because the computer that I usually record on is so laggy that I needed a better computer. And so I'm using a laptop. It's a MacBook Pro and it's actually working really well. It records a lot better than my home computer, which means that, you know, I need an upgrade pretty soon. The MacBook Pro is working better than my home computer. So this looks to be a pretty nice start, and as you can see, we're going to be playing with one, two, three, we just expanded four, four things away for that. That's pretty nice. As you can see, we're going to be playing with a hex grid and the resource icons on. If you guys want me to change that, just let me know in the, down in the comments below. It's really just like what you guys want. As you can see, I just had a little glitch there because that's the new mouse. I, for some reason, I have to press this like weird button on the side of the mouse to get it actually working. I'm not entirely sure why, but it's fine. Completely, completely fine. I also had to get all the mods working together. I could not get them to work for the longest time. I don't know why. It just my Civ Vive kept on crashing or I wouldn't be able to do certain stuff. It was weird, but I got all the mods working. I had to take out a few that I really wanted to show you guys, but that's okay. Like, it's not too bad. And oh my gosh, I hope we don't have an island start. But I, I like being on a peninsula because that means that those raging barbarians won't be able to spawn back here. So let's get a new technology as usual. And let's get immediately working on mining, and yay. So as you can see, we have found our first, our very first Barbarian camp, and we're going to have to take these guys out because in, like, I think 20 turns, maybe 40 turns, this guy will turn into a city. I'm not entirely sure what makes it so that this, these guys turn into a city, but I know what happens. And I'm going to have to take these guys out fast because there will be more Barbarians spawning because, you know, Raging Barbarians is on. So let's just... We're probably going to get a series of minor defeats here, but hopefully we'll get this XP up so we can eventually, Jesus Christ, that was bad. <laughs> oh, that was bad. So we can, and as you notice, these guys will heal back here. So we can, I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, these guys actually heal in their home base, which is really a pain in the ass. And I'm actually going to change our, uh oh, can't click on that yet. Okay, there we go. I'm going to change this actually to a warrior so we can get rid of this barbarian encampment because without it that guy's just going to sit there and spawn units so i have oh god that's not good america's already here which means that they probably got all the ruins up there so i'm actually gonna have to go down here and try to beat these guys to any ruins down here 
Hopefully you will not find any more barbarians. But you never know. We the raging barbarians is on, and I have played the first like 20 turns of one of these, and barbarians they spawn quickly. They spawn really quickly, and that's why we're going to be actually going on our tree. Now on our tree is something that usually you really avoid because it isn't really that great. Liberty is much better. We've met the Romans as well. Jesus Christ, we got the Rom Romans and Bar Jesus. That's scary. So I went right there and I got culture just because I can now adopt honor and I will get culture for each barbarian killed, which is a huge advantage when I need to adopt liberty and get all that stuff because we will be going liberty other than our quick adoption of honor, which gives us, as you can see, bonus events, barbarians, and gain culture for the empire after every barbarian is killed. So after this, we will be going for liberty so we can expand quickly because as you can see, we got Roman America, two pretty expansionist civs. And that's not the best thing in the world. Not the best thing in the world. And there isn't that much, like, great area. Like, not a lot of g big growth, thought, growth, growth spots. We might put a city down here because you can get more incense, fish, copper, and more incense. So that might be a good spot for a second city. Who knows, though? And, yeah, I completely lost my train of thought. If I was talking about something and I just, like, went into a completely different, like, thought process i apologize i'm gonna do it a lot because i'm really excited for you guys to watch this please just watch through this series it's gonna be insane <laughs> north and south america we're gonna attempt to land on there attempt to establish a colony and we might just get driven off because i watched i didn't watch i read a couple reviews on this mod pack and apparently barbarians took some capital cities like that's how powerful these guys can get they can take capital cities and that is to me insane because you know, barbarians are a problem, especially when you're on raging barbarians, but taking a city, that's insane. That's not something that ever really happens. And that means that these bar barbarians are just powerful. And I am excited for you guys to see that. Who knows how this is going to go down? So it's going to be really exciting. So we're going to heal up this guy. We're going to bring this guy down and we're going to attack this barbarian base. We're going to get gold for it. And we're also going to get culture. Now, the only reason these barbarians would do that, if there was another one spawning, or not. Maybe that's just a massive miscalculation, but all right. Well, that was easy. Uh, so we're going to attack this guy, and then we're going to attack this guy. Actually, we're not going to attack that guy because we want to kill it. And if we attack that guy with this guy, the Roman scout will take it. So we'll leave that guy for right now. But as you can see, I'm not sure what happened to the AI right there, but maybe it was just a miscalculation by the AI. But Raging Barbarians is on, and we also have a mod installed for Barbarians, so who knows? Okay, so these guys are, if these guys kill, oh, they won't, they won't. So, let's heal these guys and then take them over with this. That was a waste of a thing. We're going to send these guys up north to deal with these barbarians up here. Now, we really do, we can't afford having a barbarian city on our borders. So, we're going to have to be extra dil diligent. As And as you can see, we just got eight culture for killing that barbarian. And we're just about to get eight more. So, that's 16 culture that almost is already paying for our early adoption of honor. So, honestly, I think that's a pretty good tactic. We'll see in the long run, though. It might be bad. It might, like, make these extra long culture stuff. But hopefully it will be good because we're going to have to catch up. If you'll notice, I don't have the scoreboard up here. I apologize for that. I just completely forgot about it. And honestly, scoreboard doesn't really matter all that much. It's a good thing to see and to really measure where you guys are at. But you can always just check up here. And also, it's really not that accurate. Really not that all that accurate. Whew. Ah. But we are playing a very on a very large map, so we will have lots of competition. And if you can see, Rome and Washington are pretty good civs, I believe. I don't think they're really bad. So we're going to have to play pr a pretty good game because we are playing on very hard difficulty. These guys will start with bonuses and stuff like that. Ooh, that's a really nice place for another city. Look at all that incense. Look at all that stuff. Ooh, and uh, Buffalo, which is uh, not really that new, but it's pretty new. It was put in by like a patch. A while ago so okay so we're growing so let's get a farm out of course we had to cross that small ass river and it took all of our god damn it so we're gonna get a monument up so we can get even more culture because we're gonna have to kind of i know that we're getting culture from killing barbarians but we're also gonna really need to really need to get our culture up because we adopted that early tenant which is gonna make everything cost more and i'm not sure really right now if that was the best idea but i think it is i think it's a legit strat and that's all that really matters because i'm playing the game if you guys disagree with me i'm definitely down to hear it and why 
But I don't think anyone will really disagree with that. Except, maybe. <laughs> maybe you guys are calling me an idiot or screaming at me, but who knows? <laughs> I think I'm smart. Oh my god. Okay, so we're probably going to end up losing a thing here. So we're going to attack with that guy to weaken this guy so it takes less health from this guy. And maybe, just maybe, this guy can survive. I think he will. I think we'll be able to survive an attack by this barbarian. And then after that, we can use the quick heal, I believe. Yeah, we can use the quick heal and survive. So, hello, Netherlands. I'm not sure if they are a very good civilization or, like, high-powered. I don't think they are, but who knows. Uh, so let's see who's the best spot to build a farm right there. And yes. So we're looking like a really good spot, uh, start location. We're going to have a basically a monopoly on incense unless one of these guys drops a, drops a city down here. We're going to have a crap ton of it. And yes. But anyway, I want to change kind of the tone to something a little bit less happy, a little bit less excited. And if you haven't heard about it, I am telling you, go check it out because it's kind of a pertinent issue in our society today. And that is the shooting in Oregon. Basically, I'm not really sure the story, but someone shot up a school in Oregon and... It's at a bunch of rallying cries around the world for more gun control. And frankly, I completely disagree. Using a school shooting where there are no guns to defend these students and making it about gun control, I believe is just baloney. And I apologize if you have a different opinion than me. I would love to hear it. Like seriously, like I would want to hear what you guys have to say. Let's keep on retreating. <laughs> I would really love to hear what you guys have, like what you think on the matter. Is gun control a good thing or a bad thing? And I think it's a good thing up to an up until a point if there had been a like teacher or a student that was trained and had a concealed carry permit on them that could attack i say attack could like basically attack back i believe that wouldn't have happened these this school shooting would not have been so horrific there would have been a lot less dead if someone had the means to retaliate basically making schools a no gun zone is painting basically a huge target on their backs and i completely disagree with it gun control is a good thing but it only really takes the guns out of law-abiding citizens it makes it may make it harder for criminals to obtain guns but honestly the only thing that's going to stop a criminal that is willing to shoot up a school is force and i'm guessing that didn't go well uh oh no we can definitely take that egg out out now but I just think it, I disagree with this being like used as a rallying cry for gun, uh, more gun control. Because honestly, like if there would have been a person with a gun there, there would have been far less death, and honestly, less people would do because it's not a big like you. Basically, schools have a big "we are undefended" sign on our backs, and frankly, it's kind of scary because I'm in the public school system, and I know that if someone comes with a gun, I don't have the means to defend myself, and likely. No one's going to get there in time to save me if the guy comes after me. So that's very sobering for me to think about and also very sobering for you guys to think about. So I apologize, but I think it's something that we need to figure out. And I don't think gun control is the way to do it. But I would love to hear what you guys have to think because you guys have totally valid opinions, even if you disagree with me, especially if you disagree with me. I want to hear it down in the comments below. I want to know the opposing side. I want to know why you guys think gun control is a good thing and how it would really help. So please, that's the question of the day. I apologize if it's not really your you know, thing, you don't really, like, have an opinion on it, which is totally okay also, but just, please, just, like, talk to me, what do you guys think? Uh, so moving on, I have this class called APES, and if you don't know what APES is, it's AP Environmental Science, and it's a tough class, but mostly it just makes me depressed, because when you go to that class, you are basically, what is shoved in your face is that you are a tiny speck of grain, or a tiny, like, sand thing on, like, shit new barbarian all right you are basically like nothing you are a small insignificant human being in like the grand scope of things because we're talking about like big picture here like if you guys think about it there's been like 500 million years of life don't quote me on that but it's like around it's a huge number and to think i live for 100 years i am basically a speck and that's really scary i'm really scared of my own unimportance let's put it that way i'm scared like it it's something that I don't like to confront, but apes makes me confront it. Basically, I have to come to the conclusion that I'm not that important. If you take in the grand scope of things, like, a person is not that important. And then, of course, there's on the flip side, every human being is important, which I also believe. So it's really confusing for me. I don't know really 
know what to believe. Uh, all I know is that it's it's scary. It's a little bit scary to think about like that big scope and yeah. So anyway, moving on to something way less big scoped and way less depressing. Which else should we move on to? I don't know. Uh, I, I think my time is almost up here, but we'll keep on playing for a little bit longer. We're at turn 32, which is a good place to be at the end of the first episode I've discovered. And, oh, let me talk about something. Getting the first episode of a series is the most nerve-wracking and hard thing to do. I don't care who you are, getting, well, except for maybe the Yogg's cast, getting, like, it right on the first try, like, your full introduction, you're telling what's going on, is the hardest thing for me as, like, a commentator. Not saying, uh is the second and I don't I apologize if you guys have noticed that because I'm trying not to but honestly I like I record like the very first episode like th I think this is my seventh time recording it because I'll notice things that are like I can go in and change like once you get like a s thing going you can't go in and change it because you've already played those turns but I just feel like it needs to be perfect and I strive to do that and it's a good thing and it's also a bad thing because it means that recording the first episode takes a lot of work and sometimes it's very taxing. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. So, you know, drop a like. That's that's a hint. <laughs> but we've, there we go. We've got another Barbarian camp, encampment down. So that is great. So we should probably look in a few turns to start pumping out our second city. And I would like to explore a little bit farther up here because it looks like there's a crap ton of natural resources or luxury resources up here. And I'd also like to explore further up here because I might be putting a city down here. And I want to see if there's anything else better right up there. So we've got the Dutch Scout coming, and also I really want to get another city out because, you know, I'm sitting next to two pretty big expansionists, and as you can see, there's freaking Rome. Now, I don't know if that's a second city or a first city, but damn, we're close, and that's not the best thing because yeesh. ye e yeesh. There is an available land trade. I haven't discovered that guy yet. Shit. Uh, so while we're waiting... Uh, because I don't really want to construct a settler just yet. We'll get stoneworks. Stoneworks are great because I think they provide happiness and stuff like that. We're going to need that. Even though we've already just, we got seven right now. We're still going to need it. And yes. Oh my gosh. And as you can see, these barbarian encampments are popping up everywhere. And I'm not sure if I have the manpower to deal with it. I'm going to explore a little bit farther this way just to see what's out here. So yeah, it looks like that is the second city, which is frightening that they've expanded that quickly. And it's, yeah, that might not be good. We might get, oh shit. Okay, so we've just lost a worker. Uh, we'll be able to get it back, I think, with this guy. But if that AI is anything worth its metal, it's going to come out here and take that. Shit. Yep, as you can see, we've lost our worker. So we're going to have to attempt to get that back anyway. Oh, yeah, that's going to be pretty easy. Because we're within our own territory and we've got so many bonuses, we've basically destroyed it just there. So they can run, but they could actually run and heal up in there. But I don't think it's going to change anything. We'll have that back in a few turns. So it looks like I might want to put a city down right there and get that. I Yeah, we're definitely going to be putting a city right there. I don't care if it's really close to Antium. We have land grabbing techniques to where we can take all that land and he won't be able to get into it. It might piss off Rome. It might bring us to war. But hey, we're, we're going to have to have a big military anyway because these goddamn fucking barbarians. So why not put it to good use? Why not? So that guy's retreated back to his base. We'll have that worker back next time unless another barbarian spawns, in which case we might have to bide our time. But I think we should be fine. So after we get these stone works out in eight turns, we will turn to getting a settler. But that's all the time I have time. All the that's all the time I have today, guys. So please just, you know, leave a like down in the comments below. Leave a like down on what am I saying, guys? It's been a long day. Leave a like on this video. Please subscribe to me and comment what you guys think about the question. Anyway, that's all I have time for. I already said that. Ugh. See you guys.